Well, good morning and welcome back to Classic MGB. Now, today is a very special day because today we go to Silverstone for the MG and Triumph 100 celebration. What are we waiting for? <laughs> So here we are at Silverstone at the MG and Triumph 100 day and what a place it is. I have never seen more Triumphs and MGs in one place. I'm here at the MGB section and probably it'll take me all day to just go through the MGBs. One of the great things about club racing and actually this event as well is that you can get really up close and personal with the racing cars in the paddock. Can you imagine getting into the paddock at Formula One and just being able to wander around and look at the cars? No, me neither. even though this is an MG and Triumph day, there are other cars that aren't MG and Triumph, including this, which is probably the biggest car I've ever seen. It's a Ford Galaxy, and I think I could probably get my MGB in the boot. Now, most people think of Aselli as a tuning company. They provide MGB engines and cylinder heads, but they also have a good racing support program. As you can see, there are several drivers here who are supported by Aselli and their own team of mechanics. That must make the job a bit easier. Now, I know this channel's called Classic MGB, but when I see this lovely MG C-Type from the 30s, a classic car, I couldn't resist taking a quick shot of it. So from one of the oldest cars here to undoubtedly the newest, the new MG Cyberster. Now it was at the centenary at Gaiden a couple of weeks ago, but it was camouflaged. So this is the car's official public debut and the first opportunity to take photos. Now I know the subject of MG's involvement with EVs is hotly debated. But you can't deny this is a very pretty car and, in my opinion, absolutely worthy of the MG badge. Although this Space Age steering wheel isn't expected to make it to the production versions, which are due in the UK in summer 2024, I can't wait to get behind whatever wheel they decide to put on it. Let's have a look at some of the other highlights of the show. Now this isn't strictly MGB related, but I've caught up with driving stunt legend Ross Swift, complete legend in the motoring world. Ross, what are you doing here today? Uh, well, uh, we're here again. Uh, it was 1987 we first performed MG Live here, and uh, they, they wanted us back. I, I, 
to be honest, I don't do any shows in the UK. It's five years since I've done any shows in the UK, but I love performing at this event and uh, I, I couldn't resist. And, uh, and here we are. And, and it's wonderful to be back. Uh, the, the, the response from the crowd has been fantastic. Everybody seems to still enjoy what I do. And uh, uh, it's, 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 it's great to see so many old friends. Russ, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Really appreciate it. And it's, a, it's an honor to meet you. Oh, thank you. Cheers. And you. I hope Cheers. we see you again. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. Well, how about this? I'm at the MG Car Club marquee. I've bought the 100 hat and look who I've got with me, Andy Knott, the new manager of the MG Car Club. Andy, what made you become manager of the MG Car Club? Oh, well, I've, I've been involved with the car club since 1996. Um, I started as an office junior um, and from there I progressed on to being the editor of the magazine, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. I've made a lot of contacts over the years I've been there. Uh, the position has just become available as manager. I thought now's the right time to, to step in and give it a go. Fantastic. And uh, you've got a difficult act to follow with Mike, Mike, I guess. Mike is going to be a very difficult act to follow. He's done a lot, but I've got some good ideas. And I've, I know a lot of people in the club who have offered me support as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to progressing it, making it work. Yeah. Excellent. Can you share any of those ideas with us? <laughs> At the moment, I think we need to strengthen links with our centres and registers and branches. Uh, since COVID, we haven't been in contact with them as much as we should have been. Um, MG Motor are doing a lot of selling a lot of units now, a lot of cars. They, projected to do 80 to 90,000 this year. So I want to strengthen links with the dealers, things like that, and more events for our members and go out to the membership to see what they want from the club, really. Yeah, I mean, this event is absolutely fabulous. Best ever, I was here last year, and it seems to be twice as good. It is, it's, it's brilliant. We've really pushed it hard this year, and obviously with the centenary of Triumph and MG, it's great to have our friends from the Triumph clubs here as well, celebrating their uh, anniversary with us as well. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot going on and uh, we've organised the weather as well this year as well, which makes a big difference. <laughs> Andy, thank you so much. Best of luck in the new role. Thank you ever so much for your time. That's brilliant. Thank you. Now we've had a look around the car park and around the paddock, but the very best MGs are here in the concourse section. These cars are better than they were when they came out of the factory. Absolutely stunning. Well, it's the end of the day and we've had a fantastic day. I cannot believe how many MGs, MGBs, MG all sorts were here, as well as Triumphs, which was really interesting as well. As you can see, I've bought a few things. I've got a t-shirt, a couple of t-shirts that will appear on the channel in future. I've got a book that I haven't got, which is really surprising because I've got most of the books. I've got two caps and I got a photo of my car coming into Silverstone. So all in all, a fantastic day. As always, we'd love you to subscribe. It really does make a difference and uh, hope to see you on the channel soon. Thank you very much for watching.